I'm outside in a damn G, right outside, TT, two turn. Hi guys! <laughs> so today we're gonna get into some things as we always are. I hope you guys can see me. The sun is going down, my ring light is getting brighter. I honestly can't see anything. So <laughs> hopefully, hopefully you all can see. Hopefully it's getting what it needs to get. Um, but I wanted to talk about some things. I did. Um, as you know, I already talked about, you know, my whole experience. I mean, that video should be up. Uh, yeah, I did my whole experience with dealing with, like, social anxiety during quarantine. And what quarantine also provided for me was, um, I was able to be around, like, genuine love with my family. Like, all I had to do was wake up. And it was like, oh! So, like, when you're around that type of love, you're able to, um, I don't know, I just feel like it puts you in a very different, it puts you in a reflective space. So, what I mean by that is, like, since I was around that love and it was constant, like, it wasn't just, like, on holidays or on Sundays, like, it was every single day I was getting love, 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 love. I was drowning in it. <laughs> so, since that's what that was giving... It put me in a reflective space and I wanted I wanted to feel this everywhere in my life. And I started analyzing um, the different areas where it was or where it wasn't happening. And so, like I was saying, quarantine allowed me to be able to let go of some relationships that kind of had like a chokehold on me and that I didn't want to let go of. Um, but I needed to. And that brings us to our topic. I know I kind of jumped in it. I didn't even tell the girls to subscribe. <laughs> I just started talking. Yes. Because that leads us to our point of basically forcing, I guess, false positivity or toxic positivity or trying to like rush our healing. Um, because I found myself doing that once I ended those relationships, right? So one was like a romantic relationship and one was, um, a friendship and I let them go at the same time. So it was like, it was super overwhelming on both parts. Like, you know, I was still interacting with them and then I finally, at some point before I came back to Atlanta while we were still in quarantine, I made the decision, you know what? leader <laughs> like i'm not gonna mess with y'all no more like it's, it's not it's not giving anything that i can even need at this point you know so once i make those realizations i had to like nobody talks about like the heartbreak you get like we know the heartbreak you get from romantic relationships but i a lot of times people don't talk about like the heartbreak you have from friendship breakups Girl, so I done did both of them at the same time. <laughs> like, what woman possessed me to do that? <laughs> you know, I was on TikTok. Everybody on TikTok is telling you how you should do this and how you should do that. And they're telling you how to heal and how do you know, start your healing journey and how to be positive. And they're telling you all these things. And I'm not saying it to say that the things that they're telling you are not good or that they're not great. They are. But... I just had to realize that, like, getting to the point of be able, being able to look at, look out of a lens of positivity, I just wasn't there yet. <laughs> I wasn't there yet, and I was trying to force myself to be there. Like, I was trying to force myself to be okay with something that I wasn't okay with. I was trying to force myself to forgive people that I was not ready to forgive yet. And what I realized is that since I was forcing it, what would happen is I would try to use the technique. So like, say like a memory would pop in my head or they would, they would, you know, come in my mind or something. And I would, you know, okay, let's bring ourselves back to the present. This is where we are. Let's think about it. Let's go ahead and take our deep breath and release. Let's stretch it out. Let's journal about it. <laughs> I was doing everything and it wasn't doing nothing to me. <laughs> I wasn't doing nothing for me. I was mad still. 
I wanted to fight still. <laughs> I wanted to cause havoc still. So what I realized was what I was doing was I was I was pushing like a basically toxic positivity on myself because it's just like girl you 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 are not in a space where you can actually be positive about these situations right now and that's okay like I I feel like I learned very quickly that healing is not linear so just because a lot of the healing content may tell you all these positive type things to do um that may you may not do that at the beginning or you may not do that at the end you may do it in the middle like those things can happen at any point in time i realize that it's very as as much as the positive stuff is important actually feeling your feelings <laughs> is important um I felt like I had got so used to rationalizing my feelings or you're feeling this. And when I say that, I mean like you're feeling this because of this and that's why you felt that and that's why that happened. So this is why one plus one equals two and two times two. Like, girl, girl, that's not what your emotions are for. I learned that like, you know, your emotions are indicators, you know, like your emotions are there so that you can feel what's going on. And that you're aware of how that, of how whatever is invoke, invoking or triggering that feeling. Like you're just aware. That's it. Like you're just aware and you're just feeling it. So what I had to start doing is I had to stop um, trying to breathe everything out and trying to yoga myself to some positivity and trying to channel myself to forgiveness and just be mad. <laughs> Also, my best friend had told me she was just like, bro, healing doesn't look the same in every situation. So like there were other situations where I was able to, you know, gracefully go through that very fast. And I was able to, you know, do what I needed to do and keep it pushing. And like there was no issue with anything. And then in these two moments, since they were both major uh, moments like in my life, it was just like, bro. You might not forgive them right now, and that's okay. That's all right. That's okay. You'll get there. As long as, I realize, as long as you're taking a step every day, you're good. And that's with anything. But, like, since we're talking about healing, like, as long as you're taking a step every day. So, I love to journal. Like, journaling does it for me. Because it allows me to get whatever I have in my mind off my chest and put it in a book and leave it there and move on. Like, it allows me to do that. Like, me verbally bringing myself back to the present and just, you know, being like, bro, where are you at right now? Because, like, you're off in the past or in the future or on a tangent or you didn't create a whole situation that's not real because you want to go to war. <laughs> and it's just like, where you at right now? Like, let's bring ourselves back to where we currently are. Like, I know those tactics specifically have helped me and I've, do I've done them every day. So even though I wasn't originally in the space of forgiveness, or I wasn't originally in a space of if I see them, it's not gonna be on site. Like I was, I was in a, I was in a group. Of <laughs> if you know me, you know how I get to <laughs> and that it was a not healthy place to be in. And um, doing something each day that contributed to my healing without trying to force myself to be uber positive about something that I didn't even give myself time to even sit with you know like I there were some things that I hadn't even sat and been like bro this happened to you like this happened like all these things happened like these people that you thought were going to be in your life for a long time are not like you, you get what I'm trying to say? Like, just being able to come to terms with the situation, you got to do that. You feel me? And sometimes that's not going to happen before your healing starts. Or sometimes that's not going to happen. Like, all my, basically what I'm saying is, <laughs> it's not linear. So whenever you come to terms with the situation, whenever you start healing, wherever you want to, provide forgiveness towards those who you feel have done you wrong 
it's going to happen when it happens, but when you take steps towards it every day, it just, it, it makes that, that healing journey a little bit easier than you just acting like nothing's happening or you just trying to be super, 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 super positive about everything when you haven't allowed yourself to feel your hurt or feel the pain or feel the confusion or feel the misunderstanding or feel the lack thereof of communication or feel the heartbreak or whatever the emotion is of the situation that you now have to heal from. So I just wanted to put that out there, you know, because I just was, when I was going through that, and I mean, I still see it, like people telling you how to heal and how to do these things. And I'm not, like I said before, I'm not saying they're not great things to know, but don't get caught up in these healing gurus and try, try to push yourself, that you're, push yourself somewhere that you're not ready to be yet. Like you're not even prepared to do that yet. Because what will happen is you'll put yourself in a predicament thinking that you're good because you didn't uh, push yourself positively into the room and you lose your shit. <laughs> like you literally lose your shit because you weren't ready for that. You weren't ready for that. You weren't being honest with yourself. And that's, that's another thing that I've learned with the whole healing thing. It's really about being honest with yourself. Like, I know at some point you're going to have to come to terms with, like, what you did, what the person did, and all this other stuff. But to begin with, I really do think, like, utilize journaling, bro. I promise you it is a godsend because it, it literally allows you to just clear your mind and your heart. Anytime, anytime something will come up, anytime one of them will pop in my head, anytime I will get triggered by something, I would, <laughs> I, girl, I'm pretty sure it's journal entries of me cussing them out. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's journal entries in there of me, uh, vividly saying what I want to do. Like, and what happened is once I finally got in that, once I, you know, since I was doing that, I ended up going out one night. One of them was there, and I had a great time. I didn't lose my shit. I wasn't uncomfortable. I was doing me and doing me how I do, and their presence did not make me feel any type of way because I was taking those steps, and I wasn't trying to force myself to be okay with something that I wasn't okay with. I wasn't trying to force myself to get to the end of my healing before I even started it. So I just wanted to put that out there because I know, like, no matter – who it is or what's going on we're all healing from something or from someone and that's always going to be a thing and just like don't be too hard on yourself like don't don't try to push yourself just because you want to get over it and you want to move on like it's gonna come when it's gonna come you know like be nice to yourself and be soft with yourself you know that's that's my god <laughs> on the whole you know toxic positivity and rushing your healing like there's no race there's no race it's not but if you try to rush it it's gonna take longer than it needs to so even though there's no race it does not have to last dumb long so that is all i will say on that like i always say if y'all have any other tips or tricks or any ways that you were able to you know jumpstart your healing journey and um if you figured out or realized that you were being um you were using toxic positivity to try to push yourself along your healing journey put it down in the comments let's talk about it because your girl likes to chat okay <laughs> thanks for watching the video make sure you subscribe like i said before we are on the road to a thousand subscribers so tell your mother your father your baby your baby dad your baby mother your grandma the garbage man the person that make your sandwiches, tell them to subscribe. Okay.